welcome. I haven't started off a video in my car in a hot minute, and that is because I am going up to Richmond to meet Melissa, who is a viewer of the channel. I have thrifted with her once before when she came to pick up her daughter, and I get to go thrifting with her again. Uh, she wanted to experience the Diversity Thrift Power Hour, or the Dollar Power Hour, and so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go have lunch first at my favorite place, Fat Dragon, which is really sweet of her to allow me to pick the location to eat, uh, and then we're going to spend the rest of the afternoon thrifting, and I'm so excited. Look what Melissa's gonna give me. That's Icebreaker, if you did not know. I have never found this before. I still technically haven't, because she found it. <laughs> But thank you, I'm so excited. It fits. Lovely. <laughs> so I'm actually taking everything off the hangers right now because when you go to check out, they just ask you for a count because they know everybody's there for the power hour. Uh, so I'm counting them as I'm taking them off the hanger and putting in the bag so that way I can just hand the hangers over to the cashier and tell them my number. And that makes everything go faster for everyone. Vintage chats, Ralph Warren. I love vintage stuff. It's just more vintage Ralph Warren. And then a bunch of Columbia 2XP. Melissa gave me three bags of clothing to go towards the Bronco Fund, so I don't think I'm gonna be sourcing for a while. <laughs> but I'm really excited to show you what I picked up for a dollar a piece. There, I also got some books. Those are gonna go on a whatnot auction. And then the I also got a tree skirt. I'm gonna show you. This is everything I picked up uh, at Diversity Thrift. And it's actually really funny because I went to check out and I was like, I have this many items. And she's like, you won. <laughs> You were the one with the most items so far this hour. And I was like, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but well, I'm gonna show you the items that were not a dollar at first, and then I will show you everything else I picked up. I saw this beautiful piece and I had to pick it up. This is just super cute, very cottage core. Uh, this is a table runner and it has some hand uh, cruel, some hand cruel pieces right here. This is all hand embroidered. Absolutely gorgeous. It actually looks really nice on the back too, which is not normal. Uh, this is a really like, I don't know what this is. This feels like linen. It's really soft. And then it has this embroidered tape on the side. I don't know. It was just really pretty. And that is why I bought it. Uh, I think they made me pay $2 for this. Oh no, not $2, it's terrible. <laughs> so I picked this up. It's just a really cute little cottage core table runner, a vintage table runner, so I picked it up. Uh, I saw this as well, and we're in July, <laughs> and I went thrifting with her in June, and I still picked up Christmas. So this is a adorable, crocheted uh, tree skirt that is what this is this is a tree skirt and it's just super cute it's uh, white red and green and it ties uh, to wrap around the tree and I just thought that this was so cute it did have uh, two stains that I had to get out of the white but they came out very easily with my baking soda and Dawn dish soap paste uh, that worked really well and then I just hand washed it on delicate. I have a hand wash cycle in my uh, washing machine. That's what I'm talking about. And they all came out and it smells great now and <laughs> I'm so excited so I had to pay four dollars for this. And then everything else I'm going to show you was a dollar. So I saw these and they're green so of course I picked them up and I actually got two of these for a dollar and these are HJ Stoder, which is a mid-century maker of plastic wear. And I think these are late 60s, early 70s, but they're green, they're 12 ounces. I got two of them, so I put those up for sale. Uh, some of these have designs on them, some of these are more elaborate, but it's very rare that I find it though. And then it's even rarer that I don't keep it. But I am gonna let these go, but I will definitely use them until they sell. One of them does have a scratch on the inside, but it's just a scratch, it's not a crack, so. 
I just denote them the listing and move on. Uh, if we are in linen season, and so of course I picked up linen and I saw my other favorite color, gray, and this is CC C and C California, which is a lower end brand that makes a lot of linen stuff. Uh, I pick it up whenever I can get it for really cheap, and a dollar to me is really cheap. Uh, it doesn't sell for a whole lot, you know, maybe 10 to $20. It just depends on the piece and how interesting it is. This is just a basic pair of gray joggers, but for a dollar, definitely excited to pick this up. This is a size medium. And the reason why I'm not keeping them is because it has a 30 inch inseam and I need a 32 inch inseam. We have a pair of American Apparel jeans. American Apparel is no longer being made. Uh, the brand is defunct and died because the CEO uh, did a lot of not great things. And by not great things, I mean terrible things. And so the brand died due to that, but there are a lot of people that still really love it. It definitely is very part of the aughts culture and also part of the, the thin to win culture, which is not necessarily a great thing, but uh, these are a carrot style pair of American apparel. They're size 26, so it's a really tiny style and it is a button fly. But for a dollar, I'd figure I'd give them a try and see what happens. I don't really find American apparel that often other than maybe like basic tops. So I'm going to see how the jeans do. As a vintage seller, I like got so excited when I found this dress. This is absolutely gorgeous. This is a beautiful velvet dress from the 60s and the brand is Erlbacher. You're not going to be able to see this. The brand is Earl Bacher from Washington, D.C. This is a amazing vintage dress brand. This was, you know, like fine women's wear. And they went out of business in the 70s. And so this is just, I just really love this piece. It is absolutely beautiful. It is giving me very much like Audrey Hepburn, Breakfast at Tiffany's with like a pair of pearls and a cute little tiara. Very gorgeous. It is a size two, like a modern size two, so it will probably take a while to sell, but I just thought this was amazing. It does have a zippered back, and the repair I had to do on this is that the back was very, the zipper in the back was very sticky. Still a little sticky, so I need to do it again. But in order to fix a sticky zipper for these vintage dresses, especially these metal ones, is you gotta lube them up. And the best way to do that, and the easiest way to do that, is to get some clear chapstick. We all have clear chapstick, or most of us have clear chapstick. And to rub it along both sides of the zipper when the zipper is down, and then put it up, put it back down, do it again, put it up, put it back down, and then do that as many times until the zipper is no longer sticky. You just gotta be careful of the fabric to make sure you don't get it on the fabric because, you know, chapstick is oil-based and it can damage delicate fabrics. So just be careful, but... That is the best way to do that and the cheapest. The next thing I was shocked to find this for a dollar. Uh, this is Eddie Bauer, which, you know, not shocked to find Eddie Bauer for a dollar uh, diversity, but this is leather. This is suede leather. It actually still has its original suede leather belt. The leather on the, the back of the belt is a little bit different color. It's a little bit darker than the front and it's a little bit rougher than the front as well, but there are no stains on this. Beautiful green suede in a size medium. If this was my style, I would totally keep this because it is my color, but for a dollar, this is a great deal to get a leather jacket in a decent brand. Uh, this is another vintage brand. This is Harvey uh, F. Paris. This is really cool because it's wool. It's a wool blend, but it had the original belt attached to it. I have, I was like on the ball as far as getting the belts with the items, but it has this really cool asymmetrical belt. That's kind of like a wrap belt. Uh, it does just have a zipper in the back. So you could take the wrap belt off and put a different belt on there, but that's what comes with it giving me very 80s vibes here and it also has pockets and we love pockets so it just made you know a basic 
navy blue pencil skirt just a little bit more interesting and plus it was a wool blend and vintage and a dollar so I picked that up this is another brand I decided to try because it was a dollar also it looked absolutely stunning on the mannequin I uh, it, it looks really cool it has this really nice like high standing collar it's giving me very much dealy from Beetlejuice like I feel like she would wear something like this uh, it has a nice little ruched front with a peplum back and a flipped collar three-quarter length sleeve and I feel like this is made for a woman who's a little bit more endowed in the chest than Karen is Karen is my mannequin so there's definitely room in here uh, for your girls and I just thought it looked lovely and for a dollar I picked this up I originally thought that it, it had a silk content in it because of how it felt but it doesn't it's just a, a polyester rayon chiffon which I thought was interesting so I picked that up it's also white cream it's a cream ivory color and the fact that I didn't have to stain treat it was a miracle uh, another thing I figured I'd try is Ann Taylor uh, I've had luck selling Ann Taylor Loft before, and I've heard that her actual line does better. And this is a four petite, but it's a cute little mini skirt, and it's this gray and black leopard print. Uh, there are a lot of these bought and sold in different sizes, so for a dollar, I thought I couldn't go wrong with this. I feel like animal print never goes out of style. Uh, it either becomes more in fashion or less in fashion, but it never goes out of fashion, if that makes sense. This is an item I had to do a repair on. Uh, I'm definitely willing to do projects if I get the items for very cheap because it's easy to turn those projects into profits. So this is a pair of Tommy Bahama Relax Silk Shorts. These are 100% silk, they are pleated. This is a size 34, and they're in like this gray green color. And the repair I had to do is I had to sew the button back on. There was an extra button on here, um, and that is what I had to use, but there was no button here. But I just took that button from the inside and put it on the outside where it belonged. So that was great and that was a quick and easy repair for that. This is a vintage cheerleader skirt. Just a blue navy skirt. I'm guessing this is probably not going to sell until Halloween because then people are going to like buy it for save the cheerleader, save the world. Does anybody even remember heroes anymore? <laughs> Like, we're now in the second writer strike of my generation, and the reason why Heroes died is because of the first writer strike that happened in 2008. If you did not know that, now you do. <laughs> More random history for me. Um, but I picked this up, again, because it was a dollar, and I figured it would sell probably around the time period of Halloween. But it is made in the USA. It is a smaller size, but it is very cute, and maybe somebody will purchase that for me. I found new with tags, a Levi's. This is just a California tank top. I found it very funny that uh, someone on Depop is trying to sell this for more than what it is new and selling it as a 90s top uh, because the tag's on it anymore. I'm not going to message that seller, but I thought that that was interesting, and that is because I did a Google image search, and this exact top came up, and I was like, hmm, well, uh, it's not from the 90s, and it is new, and there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of bond sold, so I will put this up and see what happens. If you notice, you're not seeing a whole lot of listings here. Everything is listed. I'm just trying to make it easier for editing Bob because that makes it easier for me to put these videos out because I am kind of wanting to do daily videos until the end of the month to make sure I get caught up on all of my videos and so I'm just trying to make it as easy as possible for myself. So if you wanted to see what I actually listed everything for, uh, all of my stuff is linked down below and it makes it so you can easily check. Unless of course it's sold and then it's not going to be there, but sorry. <laughs> This is uh, Columbia, this is a size six, this is a squirt. I had hoped that this would fit me. Uh, it sadly does not, it does not fit me in any of the ways that are good. It's like too loose up top and too tight here because I have a itty bitty waist and a round thing that's not in your face because I'm sitting on it. But it was a dollar, so I picked this up and it's just a Columbia hiking squirt and it's gray and it's a good basic for this time of year. 
Another vintage piece. This is The Weekender by Bud Burma. And it's just a basic button front from the 70s, like late 70s, early 80s. I picked it up because it was a nice lightweight uh, poly cotton blend and it was a size large. And I love picking up these vintage button fronts because I like saving stuff for the landfill. This I picked up because of style. I just thought it was really cute. It is a modern Christopher L. Banks piece, but it's got stars. It's just a nice little open knit cardigan. So it's not the time of year for it, but you guys have seen in my what solds that I sell sweaters all year round. And in addition to having like this cool little star pattern in the knit, it also has little star buttons too. All these are little star buttons. It's super cute. So I picked this up. I know it's a size large. Uh, it's not a vintage sweater, but I still have faith that it's going to sell because it's super cute. This was a surprise. So this is a rag and bone piece and it is uh, a wool blend uh, rag and bone piece. So what's surprising about this is that it actually, uh, this exact top was worn by Kristen Bell. So that's cool. But this is a little just extra small rag and bone piece. It is very sheer. Uh, you would need a nice little undergarment for this. But I thought that was neat. Uh, some people are selling these for a, quite a bit. Uh, I'm not <laughs> uh, just because it's an extra small and I do want to move this quickly but I found this for a dollar at diversity and I thought that that was awesome so this is something that I have to ship out and what's interesting about this piece is that I actually bought three of these in different colors they were all plaid and they were all the same style and brand and that is this Columbia 2xb button front so 2xb means two extra large big so it is quite a bit roomier than your regular 2XL. And uh, this one I have to ship out because this also sold and then these two other ones sold. So this blue one sold and then this beige one sold as well. So I paid a dollar for each one and all three of them sold uh, before I could even put this video out. So Columbia 2XB and these basic button fronts, if you can get them uh, without at the bins or at another dollar sale or bag sale they sell very quickly <laughs> they have great sell through uh, you're not gonna get a whole lot for them but i think you know 10 to 15 dollars from a dollar i'll do that all day long fast flips quick and easy happy to do that this is a north face tech piece this is a men's extra large it's got the little zippered front pocket here another basic plaid button front for a dollar, I will pick stuff up like this uh, in all sizes. I sold a bunch of these North Face tops uh, when I did the Air Force Retirees estate sale. Again, I got all that stuff for less than a dollar too. Um, it, it's nice that it's an extra large, so maybe it'll sell a little bit faster, but uh, that kind of stuff I will pick up because it does sell pretty quickly, especially this time of year. Some more black velvet. I don't know why I was so drawn to black velvet or velvet in general this day. This is an Eddie Bauer velvet black velvet skirt it has uh button loops button loops belt loops and this is a size 18 it is 100 percent cotton i love that i much rather have a cotton velveteen than an acetate velveteen it just it doesn't shed as much but a good basic and this is very soft so and i i don't really find larger sizes uh for women's very often so i thought that this was lovely i also found made well more velvet <laughs> This is the ballet wrap top uh, by Madewell, and this is a size medium. This also looked absolutely gorgeous on Karen, but I think I might put it on myself so that way you guys can see what it looks like. <laughs> okay, so here is the velvet top, and y'all should know how much I adore you because uh, it is 90 degrees outside and this is toasty. But this is the ballet wrap top. You can see it is super cute. I feel like this would look cuter with a uh, you know, a pair of high-waisted jeans or leggings, something other than a pair of basic Under Armour cotton shorts. Very cute. But yeah, I saw this and I thought it was gorgeous. And to get made well for a dollar, I will absolutely do that. So uh, look at look at how the, it, the sheen in the light, look at how that changes. It's just, it's such an attractive top. So hopefully somebody else buys it for me and loves it, but it's very cute. Now I need to take this off, so. Okay, okay, that was toasty. All right, okay. So I've talked 
talked about this brand before. This is a, Y2, a 90s Y2K brand. It uh, existed from the early 90s until 2005. So if you find this brand, uh, it is only a 90s Y2K brand and that is Casual Corner. And I saw this and this is a silk paisley skirt. It is a size too petite, so very tiny. But I also thought it was very cute. I do have really good luck selling paisley items. Uh, so hopefully this one will sell as well, especially since Y2K is still in. This is a wrap silk skirt. It is 100% silk, so we'll see what happens. This is definitely more fall colors, so probably not until then. This is a polo by Ralph Lauren shirt. This is a size large, and I picked this up because it was interesting. It's vintage, and it's interesting. So this is the Woodman, Woodsman work shirt. So the buttons don't go all the way down. They go down to about here. So this is meant to be tucked into a pair of pants, like overalls or a pair of pants with suspenders in it. And I just thought that this was neat. Uh, I don't normally pick up Ralph Lauren unless it's vintage or interesting. And so the, checked all those boxes and it was a dollar. So that is why I picked this up. This also required me sewing a button back on. Um, one of the Columbia shirts also required me sewing a button back on, so there's that too. So that's, what, three things I've had to put buttons back on? Yeah. And then a zipper I had to fix. This is Abercrombie and Fitch, a size 28. Cute little light wash denim skirt. Abercrombie and Fitch is having a resurgence in popularity for some reason, so I'm just... It's the only reason I bought this and also because it was a dollar. So that is why I picked this up. Cute little denim skirt, we'll see what happens. Another item I had to sew a button back on, so that's four items now out of this that required buttons. I ha Whenever I go to an estate sale and I see a jar of buttons, I pick them up because uh, I use them for this particular reason. So this is a vintage stirrups shirt. This is actually really cute. This item is just really cute. It is a Western wear shirt. That's what the brand stirrups is. It's a three quarter length sleeve that actually has a roll tab in it. And it's like a, a mock neck Henley style in this nice black gingham. I don't know, I just thought it was really cute. And I love vintage Western wear pieces. They normally sell pretty good for me, so I'll just see what happens with this. There wasn't really any comps for this brand, but you know, it's it's a black gingham Western wear uh, and vintage. I, I, I have every faith in my ability to sell that. I also picked up this tie because I just thought it was pretty. <laughs> You guys know I love buying and selling vintage ties. I haven't shown you guys a tie in a hot minute. But I saw this floral and it was just, I know it's giving you grandma's couch, but it's cute. I don't know why. It's this beautiful pastel floral. It is a size 56 and the width is three and three quarters. This is, the brand is called Raffles and it's 100% cotton. I just thought that this was really pretty. It's from like the 80s. It also doesn't have any stains on it. I washed it and I, I ironed it. But I just thought that this was really cute. And for a dollar, well, maybe somebody else will think so too. I don't know. I just thought it was pretty. And I like saving pretty things. So this is a new without tags piece. This is a Talbot's piece. And it's 100% merino wool. And it is a 1X, which I have learned from you guys means that it is the lowest in the plus size range. So a 1X and an XL are not the same thing. And I didn't know that until you guys told me, so thank you for sharing that. This is a beautiful merino wool cardigan, black dark floral with roses on it. And it's new without tags because it still has the plastic button thing here. So that is how I know it's new without tags. But I just thought that this was beautiful and for a dollar I'm definitely going to purchase it. Another new item, but this is with tags. This is an old navy piece and the reason I picked this up is because it's black and I have really good luck selling black stuff because this does fit in the Dark Academia. This is their Lux line, uh, which is supposed to be like slinky, kind of, kind of like the Chico's Travelers, but this definitely does wrinkle. So it's not as good as the Chico's Travelers, but it's also a lot less expensive. So this is new with tags. This is a little mock neck, this is size large. <coughs> I've already had a couple of watchers on it, so we'll see what happens with that. I'm gonna have to show you 
some books now because they're in the way and I can't show you anything else. So I uh, did sell a couple of books that I picked up here on Whatnot and I don't remember which ones they are because I literally did a Whatnot shortly after I went thrifting with Melissa. So I don't remember which ones I sold. Um, but I bought this. <laughs> This is The Redemption of Althohalas. I don't know. This is the first American edition, and this is the dark cover. But if you find the light cover, which has this graphic, excuse me, this graphic on it on the front instead of this one, like it's in reverse, this one, the light version of this cover for the first American edition is worth about $10 more than this one. So I picked this up. It's only worth like $10, but I paid a dollar for it. And to me that that's worth it. So I thought that that was cool. And I learned to look out for the light version of this because it's worth money. I mean, that's also worth money, but I don't, I think more people are willing to, to buy a book and possibly sell it for, you know, $15 plus shipping versus buying a book and it's selling it for $10 free shipping. Does that make sense? I'm willing to save all the books because I love books. I also picked up this Neville Shoot, The Far Country. This is a considered a piece of classic American literature. I think this, this one is from the 50s. This is a Dell paperback and it was originally 35 cents. I also talked about in how to be successful selling eBay books without Amazon. I talked about how psychoanalysis or psychic books, vintage psychoanalysis and psychic books can be worth money. This is existential psychoanalysis. So that's kind of both of those checked off. Uh, this one's from the sixties. It's by Jean-Paul Sartre. And as you guys notice, I picked these up because they have no barcodes on the back. So I know to pick them up because I know that those are still valuable. The other, the hardcover book, it's first edition. So even if an Amazon FBA seller came through here, they would not bother to deal with these and they wouldn't bother with the other one because it wouldn't let them know that it's a first American edition. It would just show them the basic book. So that's why they didn't pick it up. Another book without a barcode. This is Sybil. So this one I think is from the seventies. I. I'll show the listing over here. I think this is the only one I don't remember off the top of my head. But this had Sally Field as Sybil. So this is an older book. This is the movie tie-in of the book. Um, I'm guessing it's from the 70s because 1978 is when UPC barcodes were mandated on all books made available for sale to the general public. So I think I'm correct in saying that this is from the 70s. But I picked this up because this also was worth more than a dollar. So these are the books I saved that I did not sell and whatnot. All right, another vintage button front. This is Chaps Ralph Lauren. And again, the only reason I picked up this at all was because it was vintage. This is beautiful and you can tell it's vintage. I mean, look at that logo. That is, that is, that's screaming like late seventies, early eighties logo right there. But that is why I picked this up is because it's vintage Ralph Lauren. It's in that, it's that nice light. I don't know how to describe it. There's something about vintage cotton when it gets that nice worn in feeling that is just, I don't know. It just feels nice. It feels really good. <laughs> so I picked this up. I know it'll probably take a while to sell, but I picked it up because I want to save that vintage stuff from the trash. This, I don't think is going to take that long to sell. The, it, with Vintage, the brand doesn't necessarily matter. This is Magnetic by McGregor. The pattern is why I bought this. This is another really cool button front. I think this is a men's size extra large. But look at how, this doesn't this look like the Rocco's Modern Life? That's what it looks like to me, doesn't it? Anyway, I picked this up because the print was amazing. It's a size extra large. I have no doubt that I will be able to sell that. This is a Polly Cotton Henley shirt, vintage floral. This is, I think, a size 18. Ooh, look at me, I'm remembering stuff. So this is a size 18, just a nice little vintage cotton short sleeve Henley and this really very bright jewel tone floral. So that's why I picked that up. Also, everything was a dollar. I'm gonna keep repeating that, it was a dollar. It's really easy to make money on dollar items. Speaking of, I also have to ship this out. Uh, this is a Liz Playborn collection, a size 16. 
this I also had to fix and it's it had all of its buttons it has these really cool uh, 3d embossed metal buttons it has a lot of them and it was a nice size so a size 16 it had this really cool striped paisley and this rich jewel tones and what I had to fix with this is the back uh, and that is because this actually did not have this metal buckle anymore so it was just kind of like haphazardly tied in the back so I went to Joann's and paid four dollars I got two buckles I only had to use one so I got one on backup in case I need to do this again and I just attached the buckle and I sewed this one together so that way it attached the buckle and then just thread this through so now there is an adjustable buckle on the back like there should have been to begin with so this is now going out it's sold and honestly between the columbia piece the three columbia pieces and this vest everything else that i sell from here on out is going to be profit so again it's super easy to make money when everything is so low and by cost and if richmond wasn't an hour away i would probably go there every tuesday there is something to be said especially since i got over 40 items in the sale that I could probably do that every time and make it worth it but now that I got the Bronco the gas is not the same like I get 20 miles to the gallon versus 38 miles to the gallon so it's still gonna be a special treat to go up to Richmond another North Face piece this is a women's size large this is a nice ombre striped cotton piece if this was my size I would probably keep this just because this feels really nice <laughs> it feels very soft so for a dollar, someone will probably buy that for me. Another one of those, what is this? Oh, okay. I forgot what I bought. Another vintage knit top. <laughs> Cause I, again, I keep buying them because I keep selling them. This is La Cirissa. Again, the size doesn't matter, or I'm sorry. The brand doesn't matter, but this is a women's size extra large, and it is also made in the USA. Really cool dolman sleeves with the banded bottom, it, and I don't know. It drapes really cute off the body, and hopefully someone will buy that for me, but it's a nice bright like pink orange color, and I just thought it was cute. More black velvet, <laughs> because again, I found a bunch of it in a this also looked amazing on Karen, which I'm showing you over here because I think it does it better justice. This has a full zip back and this is a dance piece. This is made by Stage Apparel or Stage, Ac Stage Accents. Um, this is a Y2K piece. This is also made in the USA and it is the polyester velvet instead. But this is super cute. I can totally see this being like goth mommy or sorry that was unnecessary or uh dark academia i just thought it was really cute it is also super warm but it looked really good on karen so hopefully someone will get that from me i picked these up to try because it was a dollar uh this is garnet and it's a mid-rise boot cut with this raw hem i know dark wash is not in right now but figured i give it a go and this is a size 29 so for a dollar, it's really hard not to be able to make money off of jeans, but we'll see. Maybe maybe that'll be the thing that I don't make money on. <laughs> Another black piece, uh, I picked this up because it's vintage and because I could use it, Dark Academia in the title. This is a nice little cotton blazer by Liz Sport. This is made in Korea. Really wide, like cropped. Uh, this is a size large. I just thought again a dollar I've had good luck selling Liz Sport you guys saw I just stole a Liz Claiborne piece and a vest so there are people that really love that brand and if you get good styles you can still make money Melissa actually found this not me this is icebreakers which I've only ever heard from from my friend Matt over at thrift to life he has it in his manifesto and he's like if it's got holes in it you should still buy it because people will buy it um, it does have holes in it, and I just found another one that I hadn't repaired in the sleeve, so I gotta change that listing. But this was, this is 100% merino wool. This nice little open front cardigan. 
type deal. And of course my favorite colors in gray and white. It's a little bit long in the sleeves. This is a size large, uh, but I need to fix this hole. I actually uh, patched all the other holes in it by doing a, a cotton weave, because I don't have wolf thread. I have um, cotton and silk. So I used my white cotton thread to, to repair this, but I basically just made a little weave patch and put it there and disclosed all of them, except for the one in the sleeve that I just found that I have to repair. But this is something else I also repaired. Uh, I priced it comparably. Like I saw this exact thing listed on both eBay and Poshmark between, you know, 40 to like $80, um, but mine had holes in it that I had to patch, that I still have to patch, so that's gonna go over here. Um, so I priced it a little bit low in hopes that it would still sell because most people use Eyebreaker as a performance wool, but we'll see. That That's kind of more of a, a cute piece and not so much performance piece, so I don't know. It may have been a mistake, but I was, I was super excited to find Icebreakers. Well, I didn't even find it. Melissa found it, so who knows? I might end up in a year cutting that up and making something else out of it. Who knows? <laughs> so this is another vintage piece. This is Dahlia Collection. I picked this up because it has this really nice twill. It's got pockets. Uh, it's in a good size. It's a size 10. It's a wool blend and it has the full front zip, which I think is super fun. So for a dollar, I picked that up. I think somebody could totally rock that. Promise we're almost done now, guys. <laughs> I have two more pieces to show you. This is a brand that I've shown on my channel before. The first time I found it for Thriftmas and it was a cardigan. I found it again in a beautiful floral midi length pleated skirt. This is 100% wool and the brand is Geiger. Geiger is an Austrian brand and their stuff retails for hundreds of dollars. <laughs> hundreds of dollars. Uh, something like this on their site would probably retail for like six seven hundred dollars um but i'm of course not going to sell it for that much it, it sells on the resale market especially since this is a vintage piece for roughly around 40 to 70 dollars it just depends i have little cedar balls in it because this is 100 percent wool and i don't want any more holes in things so i got little cedar balls that i have linked in my amazon store just to make sure that this doesn't get any moth holes in it because it's in perfect condition I just thought this was absolutely beautiful and I got very excited to find Geiger for a dollar because my cardigan sold really quickly and for a really nice profit um, because I paid I think five dollars for that at the thrift store so I think I sold it for like 40 um, pretty quickly so I think uh, I'm hoping for the same here. And then the very last piece I have to show you is this J. Crew piece and this is my size so it's very tempting to keep it. It is one of those Henley button fronts again, so it doesn't go all the way down. And the reason I picked this up was one, it's because of my size. Two, it's in a color I would totally wear. Three, it's in a style I would totally wear. And four, it's Baird McNutt. Baird McNutt is one of those high-end fabrics that you should look up, look out for. It's a linen fabric, just like Laura Piano. That also makes fabric, or Liberty makes beautiful cotton prints. Um, so I found a Baird McNutt J. Crew piece and 100% Irish linen in my size that I'm trying really hard not to put on so I don't keep it. <laughs> but as you can see, I picked up a lot in this dollar hour. Uh, I would recommend that if you do live in Richmond and are wanting to do the uh, power hour uh, while it lasts, uh, show up at two and go through all of the racks. Um, so that way by four o'clock you're ready to check out and you're not having to fight the crowd to find stuff. But that is what me and Melissa did and it worked out well for both of us because she also got, I think almost 30 pieces or something. I think I got, I, I think I got 40, over 40 different pieces of clothing and the two linen pieces as well. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Until then, bye. Bye. Hero, hero. Hero, hero, I wanna be a hero, hero. Oh, the hero.